Hi, everybody. It, it wasn't that amazing? A lot of the information that we will use comes from them. So thank you. Can you hear me well? OK, good. Um, so my name is Ana Valdez. I'm the CEO and president of the Latino Donor Collaborative. Some of you, thank you so much. Some of you, I, I know who, um, are users of our information, and we're so happy because we want you to spread the word. We need, to know, we need to know that everybody knows who we are, and that's what the Latino Donor Collaborative does. We're a think tank that creates information that was not out there before. It's based on official information, like the census. Thanks to everything you guys do with the census, we have a lot of information, and then thanks to a lot of other great partners in research that we have, some of them whom are here. Um, but what we wanted to do 13 years ago when the think tank started was to tell you your worth, not because you don't know it. Individually, you know all of you are achievers, are high achievers. You are the American dream. But sometimes we don't know who we are as a community, right? Um, what we noticed was that the difference between who we really are in this country and the perception of who we, we are, thanks to media, it's very different. And so our job is to close that gap between the perception, right, the narcos and the, you know, Mayans MC and all those shows that, yeah, they're great shows, but they're really bad stereotypes and the reality of who you are, right, of who your families are, of who your friends are. So that's what we do. And I am here to tell you the numbers every year, as you, some of you know, uh, we bring you some information like the Latino GDP report, like the Latino representation in media in English, because in Spanish, all the media is, in, is, is Latino, but you know, in English um, and all these reports that we bring you. But this time around, I am actually going to tell you where those numbers come from and how are those different variables affecting and actually impacting positively everything you do and everything your partners do. And so with that, um, we can start with the presentation, please. Thank you. So what is the impact of the US Latinos in the economy? And remember this, this is only US Latinos. The ambassador was so kind to tell us what she's doing in Mexico, which is fantastic. And all of you, you know, if you're immigrants like me, we know what our countries are doing, which is really great. And of course, with our ups and downs, etc. But, you know, in general, we really are in an incredible contribution, as, you know, Joaquin said, right? We are making this country better. And by the way, thank you, Claudia, for putting this together. Thank you, Dolores Huerta. Please, a big applause for Dolores. How amazing to have you here. Juan, oh my God, Juan Andrade, thank you, thank you so much. So, um, so that's who we are, right? These leaders have shown us who we are. But what I'm gonna do as I tell you is to tell you a little bit of where those numbers come from. And next, please. So as we were saying, and, and um, our friends from the US Census already uh, showed us some of that information. But what's incredible, and I, I really want to point out that um, the numbers are not here, but they were in the census presentation. We were 9% in 1970. Today we're 20%. One out of every five people in this country is Latino. And most of the growth comes from us. So next. So exactly as we were saying, and, and as our friends from the census were saying, we're growing everywhere. It's not only Mexicans growing or Venezuelans growing, which is like what you hear in the newspapers. Everybody's growing, and every state is growing. This year, actually, we uh, made a commitment to you guys last year to bring you additional information that tells you why are we growing so much? Tell us the details. Put faces to the numbers, right? So one of the reports that we did this year was we actually are reporting the Latino GDP by state. And we not only are reporting the Latino GDP by state, but we're also bringing you the Latino purchasing power by state, Latino impact in the economy by state, Latino upward mobility by state, because we want you to use these numbers at every step of the way of your life. Not only in your business, not only in your organization, but when you go to the soccer game of your kids, tell your neighbors that are not Latinos, and even the Latinos, who we are. Right? We are the fifth largest economy in the world. And that's 
incredible. Imagine that the number one is the United States, number two is India, is um, China, number three is Japan, and number four is Germany. After Germany, Latinos in the United States are the largest economy in the world. This is what I'm telling you that is the difference between the gap, uh, the difference between the perception and the reality of who we are. And here we are, sometimes wondering, and sometimes, I don't know if you've noticed that, but as an immigrant, I noticed it when I arrived 20 something years ago. There's sometimes even some kind of shyness, and I don't want to say shame, but there's some shyness of who we are. Well, get rid of that shyness because we are 20% of the population bringing most of the growth and we're the fifth largest economy in the world. So that's the pride that I want everybody to have because the more we know it, the more we'll spread the word, right? Next. Oh, so just let, well, and this one, what I was saying is that today in New York and California, one out of every two babies that are being born are Latinos. California and New York are the largest, most powerful states in this country. One out of every two babies are Latinos. They will be American because they're born here. They will uh, have English as a second language, as, jo as Joaquin was saying. Hopefully, they'll have Spanish too. But English will be their first language. So there's no, um, you know, there's no like, oh, you have an accent like me. Or, you know, you, you don't speak English well or something. No, they will be American. And so that's, that's the incredible. I, well, okay, uh, next, please. I, I want to tell you so much information, and I know only, I only have 15 minutes. Um, so the Latino GDP report, as I was saying, this is our sixth edition. We're very proud, of course, with some of you. Actually, Wells Fargo is here, Pati Juarez, our biggest sponsors, um, which is amazing. They make possible this incredibly deep research of digging out the numbers from the census, from the Department of Labor, from the IRS, from everywhere, right, on how we are contributing to the United States. Um, next, please. So again, 3.2 trillion of the GDP is Latino, and we are the fifth largest economy in, in, in the country. And you know, California and Texas, the two highest GDP in the US are now majority. So not only one out of two babies being born today are Latinos, but we're majority in the two states. Imagine that, Texas and California. We are majority, we're more than Anglos in those states. Next. So this is a lot of information, but I wanted to tell you that the economy keeps growing because of us. The economy without Latinos wouldn't grow as much. It would grow barely 1%. I don't know, some of you like me are nerds, and some of you like me too are very toned into the economic numbers, right? Uh, from our countries of origin, from here, you know, the GDP growth is the most important indication. Well, the United States without the Latino GDP would not be growing as much. And even we know and we've heard, unfortunately, that the projection about GDP for 2050 is not very positive for us, right? The United States, unfortunately, will turn out to be between, depending on the projection, the third now or the fifth largest economy in the world, the United States overall. Well, the projection from the same people say that the Latino GDP will continue growing at four, five, and 6% every year. So we will keep the GDP of the United States up as much as we continue contributing. Next. So why, so, okay, so as I said, this year we're bringing you, and please, I know that most of you, or at least a lot of you use our information, but I'm not sure you noticed that this year we're providing all these new variables. As I said, Latino purchasing power. We discovered, I don't know if you remember, the Selig Institute was the last one that did Latino purchasing power. And about six or seven years ago, they calculated it deeply. They did a really good research at 1.7. Well, our uh, partners in research of, in Arizona at uni Arizona University brought out the number for 2021, and it's 3.4 trillion dollars. The growth of our purchasing power is incredible. As our friends from the census was saying, that's one of the most important growths that we have. Right, Latinos. Next. So again, we are the fifth largest economy. Next, I told you before. Um, and this is exactly what we were saying. Um, yes, oh God. Uh, so as we were, as the, our friends from the census were saying, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wisconsin, Minnesota, 
um, Michigan, uh, all these states are growing with Latinos. And the incredible part of this is that it's not immigrants. Immigration from Latino countries actually has diminished. But it is people that are coming from larger states that are actually coming in with credit and with some purchasing power and with savings and are founding new jobs because we actually found 55% of all the new businesses. Next. So behind the growth, and I only have five more minutes, but uh, behind the growth, next. What is it? The first one is population, and we heard, right? We are growing tremendously. Second. Uh, next. Um, remember this. If we don't have population, this story, and of course it's not a story, there's a lot of truth in it, that everything will be automatized. So people think that, you know, demographics are not important anymore because, oh no, I mean, we're going to have extra people that we're not going to need. That's not true. For the kind of economy that the United States has, we're going to need workforce. And today, we are at the lowest um, uh, under um, unemployment in the in history, right? That means, according to, to uh, economists, we're actually lacking workforce. So if it was not for the demographics of Latinos, we actually wouldn't have that workforce. And as you know, without, without birth rate, there's no workforce, and without workforce, there's no growth. And that should be ingrained in our minds. Because when people say, oh, they're coming here and they're invading us, no, no, they're coming to make us a favor. Without immigrants, we wouldn't be where we are today. Next. Thank you, yes. Thank you, thank you, yes. Immigration. Youth is another important part, and we already talked about it, but I'm, I'm just going to give you a number that is incredible. The most populated age of Latinos, according to the census, by the way, is 13 years old. The most populated age of non-Latinos in the United States is 62. That gives you an idea of how important youth is, how much it's our strength, how much, why do all the companies that you make business with or that you are donors to, or et cetera, et cetera, should think about us. Because if we are so young and we're contributing so much today, we haven't even peaked. Our kids haven't even gotten into the workforce. Imagine in the next seven, eight to 10 and 15 years, when all those kids that are being born get into the workforce, right? That's another one of the reasons why we're growing so much. And that's a very important part of why you should make sure that your partners know the value of Latinos. Next. Oh, by the way, about youth, as I said, we made a commitment to bring a lot of extra information. We um, are actually doing an incredible report with Cantar, if you know them, um, about Latino youth. And we want to quantify how much Latino youth is contributing, purchasing power, et cetera, et cetera, but also how demanding they will be. And we're making projections for the next year. So next year, hopefully, I'll be here happy to present. Uh, next. Next. I spoke about this already, and I have very little time. Ne I spoke about workforce. Thank you. Uh, next. So labor, this is a really interesting part. So we are the cohort that is more employed than any other cohort in this country. Remember how we've heard the myth that Latinos are lazy? Well, it happens exactly the opposite. We're the most employed, and after the pandemic, we were the first ones to go back to the normal employment rate. 68% of all employed, employ, uh, employable Latinos are actually working. The next cohort is 62%. So we are exactly the opposite of lazy. Next. That's another reason why we're growing so much. Next. Educational attainment. Next. And I want to tell you not only about, I think the numbers of the census are incredible, and we actually were very concerned about this. How are we growing? So we did a report with SHIP, Society of Latino Engineers in the United States. And we found, these numbers are incredible, and, and I, I hope that you're as proud as we are. We cried with this report every, every second, every time that we got together to analyze it. In, 2020, in 2010, 4% of Latinos, no, 4% of engineer students were Latinos in the United States. 4%, 2010. By 2021, 18% of Latin, of students are engineers. So 
This is why I'm telling you we're bringing, and you got to go to our website, latinodonorcollaborative.org. We're bringing you the explanation of where these numbers are coming from. We want you to have these numbers at the top of your tongue. So when people say, well, yeah, but maybe they're just, you know, graduating, but they're not working. No, they are. And believe me, I just went to the SHIP annual convening. And you see, and by the way, some of our friends here were there, recruiting engineers from the Latino community. Um, 17,000 kids, perfectly dressed, wonderful, most of them sons of immigrants, very, parents very underserved, ready to be hired by Procter & Gamble, Google, Meta, and everything else, right? And them fighting for them. So we are the solution to a lot of problems. Next. I, I'm going to have to, I know, I have to finish. Um, next, next, next. I'm, I'm just going to, next. Wage and salary, you heard, next. Next, entrepreneurship, you heard too. Um, so I just want to close with the Latina thing, and you're going to love this. So 78% of all the decision-making in the household is made by the Latina in the household. Another myth. Mexicans are macho. I'm not saying that they're not, but Mexicans are macho. Uh-huh. Well, 78% of all the decision-making, including buying a house, a car, like all the decision-making is made by a Latina. So that's another number you have to tell everybody, right? Listen to us. Thank you so much.